Hey everyone, welcome back. Today we're going to learn how to construct and assemble a laser cut hydraulic claw just like the one seen here. So whenever you're ready, let's go ahead and get started. You're going to need the following materials to construct your hydraulic claw. 1 8 inch thick laser cut pieces of acrylic or wood. 8 syringes, 3 of which will need a hole drilled in them large enough to accommodate an M3 bolt. One of the syringes will need to be cut and modified so that this distance right here is about two inches and you have two holes drilled once again to accommodate two M3 bolts. Four pieces of acrylic tubing roughly two feet in length and an inner diameter of one-eighth inch. And of course some water here to fill up your syringes. And you're going to need the following screws to construct your hydraulic claw. Four 12 millimeter M3 screws, nine 10 millimeter M3 screws, one 8 millimeter M3 screw, two 35 millimeter M3 screws, two 45 millimeter M3 screws, three 50 millimeter M3 screws, and one 30 millimeter countersink M3 screw, and one 25 millimeter countersink M3 screw, and finally one 10 millimeter countersink M3 screw. And for each screw, you're going to want enough M3 nuts and lock nuts. Four 3D printed pieces, two of which will be used to mount your syringes and the other two will be used to attach to your claw. You're also going to want two hex key wrenches and some needle nose pliers. And the last thing you're going to need is a drill with an appropriate size drill bit to create countersink holes in the bottom of your hydraulic claw. Make sure your drill bit here has a countersink tip to it. Once you have all of the required materials, we can now go ahead and start constructing our hydraulic claw. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do when we start making it is we're gonna start from the base and we're gonna work our way up. So you wanna obtain the following two parts. You wanna obtain the platform foundation here and the rotating base. The next thing you wanna do with your drill is create two countersink holes here. One at the center hole and one over here at the corner hole. All right, and if you have a countersink bit, just like the one seen here, use that. If not, the tip of a traditional drill bit should work just fine. All right, so when that's done, you wanna grab a countersink screw, go ahead and insert it into the hole and make sure the top of the screw head is not protruding outward. Okay, like that. You wanna make sure it sits below the surface of the material and is flush with the surface of the material. Okay. After that, go ahead and make one more countersink hole right here in one of these corner holes of your rotating base part. All right, once that's done, we can go ahead and start inserting our screws. Now grab your 30 millimeter countersink screw and place it through the corner countersink hole. And then do this process in the center hole, but this time use your 10 millimeter countersink screw and place it through the center countersink hole and then go ahead and lay it on the table so that both screws are protruding upwards. Next, go ahead and grab your rotating base part and in this corner hole here, in this corner countersink hole, place your 25 millimeter countersink screw through it and then go ahead and place it in the center here of your platform base so it's able to rotate freely here. And the other screw is protruding upwards. Now go ahead and grab an M3 nut and go ahead and screw it to the center M3 bolt or screw. And when you're screwing your nuts onto your bolts here, you'd want them snug but not overly tight. That way the parts rotate and move freely. Now grab the syringe mount 3D printed part seen here, and this one has the shorter distance right here. And then go ahead and grab a 12 millimeter M3 screw and place it through this hole. And then grab a nut and place it on your screw. So when you're done, you have something that looks like that. And then once that's done, go ahead now and slide it 
over the protruding 30 millimeter here countersink screw. Next, go ahead and grab a syringe and make sure the plunger has a hole drilled through it and go ahead and insert your syringe into the 3D printed part and place the plunger with the hole in it over the screw and then assemble them together so that you have something that looks like that. Next, grab an M3 nut and go ahead and screw it down over the M3 screw here to secure your plunger in place. Once that's done, go ahead and obtain the three following laser cut pieces. And then what you want to do is place them in your rotating base like so into the slots. This portion is going to go between them. So when you're done, you have something that looks like this. Once that's done, to hold everything in place, grab a 50 millimeter M3 bolt and a M3 nut and then go ahead and slide it through here the bottom hole and then go ahead and screw on your nut to hold everything in place once again you want things snug but not overly tight take your hex key here and tighten it down. Now go ahead and grab your other 3D printed syringe mount part here and place a 12 millimeter M3 bolt through it and an M3 nut on the other side and once that's done go ahead and slide it between these two parts here. Grab a 50 millimeter M3 screw and slide it through this hole. and then go ahead and place an M3 nut on the other side. So that this thing can rotate freely. So for now we're gonna go ahead and set this portion aside and we're gonna construct the lower arm portion of our claw. Now go ahead and obtain the following laser cut pieces so we can assemble our lower arm. Grab the larger syringe holder and push it into this second slot here and then grab an empty syringe without the plunger and slide it through, okay, kind of holding it in place. Grab the smaller syringe holder and slide it over the syringe and into the slot. So when you're done, you have something that looks like that. Then go ahead and grab your second syringe holder and place it in the front slot there and grab your other arm piece and place it over these parts so that they interlock. So you should have something like that when you're done. Now go ahead and bring back in your platform base and column here and the part that we just assembled and what you're gonna to wanna to do is go ahead and slide this into place like so and grab your last 50 millimeter M3 screw and slide it through all the holes Carefully hold everything into place and grab an M3 nut to place on the other side. Once again, you want it snug but not too tight. I'm going to go ahead and place a clamp on here just to hold everything in place. Then I'm going to go ahead and grab a 45 millimeter M3 screw. And I'm going to grab the syringe with the hole drilled through it. I'm going to lift this piece up. I'm going to place my screw through and I'm going to at the same time have that screw go through the plunger hole and through the other side of the arm here. Once that's done, I'm going to go ahead and place an M3 nut on the other side to secure everything so I can take my clamp off.
Once that's done, I'm gonna go ahead and grab a syringe, a hollowed out syringe here, and I'm gonna lift my claw up and out of the way for now, and I'm going to insert this piece into my 3D printed piece right here. I'm gonna grab my plunger and insert it back into the syringe here. So when you're done, you hopefully have something looking like this. I'm gonna go ahead and move this portion of the claw out of the way so we can start assembling our upper arm portion. To assemble our upper arm, we're gonna need the following laser cut pieces or parts. All right, so now go ahead and grab one of the arm pieces here in a syringe holder and push it into the second slot. Grab an empty syringe without the plunger and slide it through. And this part can be tricky because you gotta kinda hold everything in place. Grab a second syringe holder, place it through, and push it into the back slot so that you have something like this. Now grab your third and final syringe holder and place it into that front slot so that you have something that looks like this. All right, and then grab your other arm here, piece of your arm, and carefully push it into place so that all the slots line up so that when you're done, you have something that looks like this. Once that's done, go ahead and grab your claw mount here and you're gonna slide it into these grooves right here. This plastic will flex a little bit. So just kind of holding everything in place, kind of wedge it into those two slots. So that when you're done, you have something like that. Then to hold everything in place, grab a 35 millimeter uh, M3 screw and slide it through these, this hole right here and then go ahead and put an M3 nut on the other side here. And this one you're gonna want fairly tight so that it holds everything in place. Now let's go ahead and bring back our the other portion of our claw and the part that we just assembled. Now this is important. When we go to screw this in, we wanna use the second hole. Don't use this back hole yet. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna line up these holes just like so. Take a 45 millimeter M3 screw and slide it through the holes as best you can. Grab an M3 nut and place it on the other side to secure it and hold it in place. So when you're done, you kind of have something all assembled so that it looks just like that. Now go ahead and grab your final plunger with the hole drilled through it here. Place it into the syringe, the hollow syringe here. Okay, and what you want to do now is you want to get this screw, an, uh, an M35 screw here, through this hole, through the syringe hole in through the other side and then secure it in place with an M3 nut. So that now you have this movement right here. And the reason why these syringe holders are larger is, is to allow for movement of our syringe so it can go up and down, which allows for more, more mobility in that direction. All right, so now we're gonna go ahead and start assembling the claw portion of our hydraulic claw. And what you're gonna to want to do, this is all the laser cut and two 3D printed pieces here. I printed these out of Ninja Flex, but regular PLA will do. You're gonna to wanna to use lock nuts for the claw, and lock nuts have a small little nylon insert in them which hold them in place. If you use regular nuts, you're gonna be constantly finding yourself having to tighten them. So I highly recommend using lock nuts, M3 lock nuts, and you're gonna want two washers. Now go ahead and grab your left gear, a 10 millimeter M3 screw, and place your left gear over here so that the holes line up, and then place your screw through it, through the holes. And this is important, you do wanna use a washer here, Place a lock nut 
over the top here and get it finger tight and then use the hex key to get it snug but not overly tight so that your gear here moves freely. Now let's go ahead and repeat this process for our right gear but when you go ahead and place it on here you want to make sure that your gears are symmetrical and that the arms protruding out from the gears here are in a similar orientation. You don't want one over here. You want it so that the gears mesh and the teeth and our, our arms here protruding out are aligned in a similar manner. Once that's done, go ahead and grab once again a 10 millimeter M3 screw and place it through the two holes. Grab a washer again and a lock nut and place it on top. Okay. So when you're done, you should have something where your teeth and your gears move like so. Once that's done, go ahead and grab these two small claw brace parts and we're going to place them right here on these front two holes and once again use lock nuts. And it's up to you if you want to use a washer. I'm not using washers in most of the video just for time purposes and to make it a little bit easier to assemble. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and place that one right there. Okay, once again, I'm going to finger tight here the lock nut to hold it in place. I'm going to repeat this process for the other one. Place a 10 millimeter M3 screw through the two holes. Grab a lock nut. And get it finger tight. And what you're going to want to do now is once you have them finger tight is you may want to go ahead now and hold them in place. Hold your nut in place with some needle nose. Use your hex wrench here and just get them tight to where they're snug but not overly tight and they can't move. So that's pretty good. Now let's go ahead and place our two claw portions on here. So what we're going to do is we're going to line our holes up. Grab once again a 10 millimeter M3 screw and place it through the two holes. Grab a lock nut. Get them finger tight. Get our holes lined up. Place the other screw through. Grab another lock nut and get it finger tight. Now let's go ahead and place the other claw on. Basically repeating the same process. Grab another 10 millimeter screw here. Make sure the holes line up. There we go. Grab a lock nut and get them finger tight. And then when you're done, once again, go ahead and tighten them using needle nose pliers and a hex key. Okay, go ahead and do that for all of them. So that, once again, they're snug but not overly tight. Now go ahead and grab these two 3D printed pieces for the end of the claw. I printed these out of flexible TPU material, but regular PLA or ABS will work just fine. All right, so what you're going to want to do is go ahead and slide them over the ends like so. And then you're going to want to take two 12 millimeter M3 screws and place them through the holes. Okay, 
and you don't need lock nuts for these you can just use regular M3 nuts So when you're done, just get them finger tight and you have something that looks like this. All right, so now we gotta go ahead and connect our plunger to our gears here. And to do that, you're gonna need this special sort of um, modified plunger piece here that I talked about earlier. You want this distance to be about, oh, two inches or so cut. I removed this bottom rib here. I left the top rib here in place just for structural integrity reasons. You could probably remove it if you want um, but I'm going to go ahead and leave it. And you're not going to use both holes. You're only going to use one of them. All right. Um, but feel free to drill two holes just in case it rotates around or something. Okay. All right. So now let's go ahead. What we're going to do now is go ahead and place it so that this rib feature is facing upwards and place it into the syringe like so. Okay. Now go ahead and grab your two inch connecting rod here. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna connect our plunger to our gear, something like this with a couple of M3 screws. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab my hex key and I'm gonna place my, my eight millimeter M3 screw on top of it. And I'm gonna kinda of come from underneath, line up my holes and get them so that it looks something like that. And then I'm gonna take my lock nut and get it finger tight. And when you're all done, you're gonna probably wanna use some needle nose pliers and your hex key to get it really nice and tight because you don't want this loose. In order for your claw to function properly, once again, you want everything very snug but not overly tight. Now we need to connect our connecting rod here to our gear. So I'm gonna move these gears all the way out, spread them out as far as I can. I'm gonna move my plunger here out to about right here, okay? And then I'm gonna line these two holes up and I'm gonna grab a 10 millimeter M3 screw and I'm gonna place it through here. Now these holes I made a little bit smaller so that you can just kind of screw it and self tap them as you screw them in. Okay, so go ahead and screw that in as best you can, and you're probably going to want to use the hex key here to do that. Okay, once that's in place, now I'm gonna go ahead and grab a washer and put a washer over that. And then I'm gonna put my connecting rod over that. And once again, I'm gonna go ahead and place a lock nut on top of it and get it finger tight first. And then use uh, some needle nose pliers and get it tight just like all the other nuts. So when you're all done, you should be able to get a good range of motion with your claw, with your plunger moving in and out here. So kind of turn your gears manually here and move them back and forth and just test it out. Okay, that looks pretty good. All right, and when that's all done, the last thing you wanna do is basically go ahead and get your other four syringes hooked up along with your acrylic tubing. So take your acrylic tubing and as best you can, slide it over the end of each syringe onto the nipple there. And you may wanna use needle nose pliers to push them on there, okay? And then connect the other syringe to the other end. And it's a good idea to just try it out with air first before you add water to these guys. Okay. 
And like I said, when you're all done, test it out with air first. Make sure that they all work pretty well. And then go ahead and start filling it up with water. And to fill it up with water, I highly recommend having a squirt bottle and something with a pour spout on the end of it, just so it doesn't get too messy. And what you're gonna to wanna to do is you're gonna to wanna to literally just go ahead and remove the plunger here, fill it up with water to the top. Make sure the other plunger on the other end of the tubing is completely closed. Go ahead then and push the plunger down so that it's held in place, okay? Once that's done, take a look at the other plunger. Notice there's some air bubbles there for gaps. So what you'll do is you'll take it out, fill the other plunger up with water, and you're gonna to wanna to keep doing this until the air bubbles are completely removed, okay? Now, it works really well. Do that for all of the syringes all right, and keep going, keep working until you get all of the air bubbles out of the hose. So when you're all done, hopefully you have a claw that can move in four basic directions. That'll do it for this video. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.